So in video three, we talked about muscle invasive bladder cancer, the cystectomy and the treatment options. So today in video four, we're going to discuss about living after, so post cystectomy, um, and hopefully we're going to run through some helpful everyday tips to help patients live um, as normal a life as possible. Um, so we'll start off again by just introducing people that are here. So if you want to start. Hi, my name's Debbie. I'm one of the stoma nurses here at South Mead Hospital. My name's Barry. I'm a bladder cancer patient. My name's Nigel. I'm a bladder cancer patient. Uh, my name's Janet and I'm also a bladder cancer patient. Thanks. So if we could just turn to Debbie to start with, I just wonder, could you explain the role of the stoma nurse for us? Yeah, um, we have a, a specialist role. We provide support and advice for patients throughout their surgical experience and post-operatively. Okay. Um, and we've heard in the previous videos a bit about, um, about the actual stoma. So I understand that the positioning of that is quite important. So it is. It's largely dictated by the nature of the surgery. However, um, in our pre-op assessment, we will assess the patient's abdomen in laying, sitting and standing positions. And by doing that, we can determine where best to place the stoma, taking into consideration any creases, dips, previous scarring, waistband, those sorts of things, so that the, the patient is able to um, visually be able to see the stoma and physically be able to manage the stoma after it's been formed. Okay, yeah, and I guess that comes back to a bit about what Janet said about um, the what, deciding also what clothing that you might wear and that might affect Absol your decision. Is Absolutely. There anything else? Um, yeah, we can most definitely speak to patients about um, clothing issues um, uh, as part of um, living with their stoma because that needs to be right for the patient. It might not be that we're able to specifically place the stoma where someone feels that they should have it. However, we can talk to them about how they can manage that afterwards. Okay. And I guess related to the position of the stoma, it's also understanding what, like, what the, the, ba the stoma bag is that attaches to that. Absolutely, stoma. yeah. So the, the stoma pouch um, is a bag that places over the stoma. It sits on the surface of the skin with an adhesive vacuum, so that adheres to your tummy area, which is why it's important to have a relatively flat surface mm -hmm. to optimise the adhesion of the pouch. Um, your stoma then will then fill into the bag and all of our bags, we have many um, to choose from. So this particular pouch might not be the right one for the patient. We have many varieties of different shapes and sizes um, by different product companies as well. So we work with the patient quite closely to determine which pouch is gonna be best for them. All of the pouches will drain from the bottom of, of, of the bag um, and we'll, we'll generally have a little nozzle on the end as this one does. And do you help teach the patients sort of how to change their bag and discuss about how frequently they should do it? And we do. We, um, following surgery, we'll see the, the patient generally the day after they've had their, their operation. Um, and we will work routinely with them um, in, whilst they are an inpatient in hospital. We'll teach them how to manage and care for their stoma, um, improve their confidence with their own stoma management because they need to become independent with this. Uh, prior to going home, so we work um, we work with them for the entire time that they're here as an inpatient. Okay, and is there any other sort of support that you'd give them like before or during or after surgery? We would have already met the patient in a pre-op assessment, um, which is where we, we talk about the nature of the surgery and provide them with information regarding stoma management and care. Um, that's a good opportunity for the patient to raise any concerns that they might have with lifestyle issues or anything at that stage. Mm. Whilst they're here as an inpatient, we can continue that. So often, you know, there's many questions that a patient will think of afterwards that they want discussed, or, or actually, as they're using the pouch themselves, um, they'll want to um, discuss certain situations with us as well. And so that provides another good opportunity for them to talk through any issues that they might be facing or worrying about. Post-operatively, so once the patient's gone home, we'll routinely see them in our clinic appointments. Um, normally quite often within the first six weeks post-operatively and then as the patient becomes more confident with their stoma care and um, the management of their stoma, we'll start to see them less, less regularly. Unlike some other services, a patient is never dis discharged from us as stoma nurses. We are always there for them, okay. whether it be a year down the line, two years down the line, five years down the line, they'll, they'll still be able to contact us if they have any issues at certain periods. Um, after being dis discharged. Okay, and you mentioned about sort of um, 
being able to talk about different types of topics. What other kind of topics could uh, the patient discuss with their stomach? So there's really nothing that's off limits to um, the discussions that we can have with a patient. Um, it's important to mention that if we're unable to answer any questions or we feel that the patient requires further support by a different team, then we will refer them. Um, some of the more common topics that we can discuss are um, returning to work, clothing issues, um, dietary advice, um, intimacy, um, emotional support. So, you know, there really isn't anything that we can't talk to our patients about. Okay. And you mentioned about when they're um, getting ready to be, like, discharged. What, how much sort of supplies would they expect to take away? Um, so generally we'd give between two or three weeks worth of supplies for the patient to go home with, um, just so that they've got enough products to be getting on with. We would provide them with an appointment to come back and see us. Generally, within around about within a week um, of them going home, they'd come back to see us. We will then top them up with any extra products that they need. Just work through with them and make sure that what they're doing at home is okay, that they're getting on okay with the pouch that we've initially supplied them. Mm -hmm. Things may change. They often do within the first four weeks um, of, of surgery. The stoma can change shape. Their tummies, as you can imagine, are normally quite swollen after surgery. So as that goes down, the stoma itself can change shape a little bit. So we might need to make a few minor adjustments. We may even need to change the pouch that they're initially using, mm -hmm. because when the stents come out, that can that can play um, a, a, you know a different sort of part in how the stoma functions. So um, you know once they've once we've established ourselves with a certain product, then we'll go on to um, you know supply them with 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 that on a more regular basis. Yes, and how does that work with about who, who organises the ongoing sort of supplies? Of so the GP would then write a prescription and they would collect their products from their pharmacy. Mm -hmm. There is an alternative method of how they get their, their products sent to them, which is via the post. And we would register with the patient with a company that can do that. So they would provide all of their, their products with the, for them. Um, we set them up with their first delivery and then it's down to the patient to order their own products as and when they feel they need need them. The, the only bit I'm not sure because this talks about a local team is that is there a transfer that happens to a local team? Or? So um, occasionally we have patients that are out of area um, so they're not Bristol patients they've come from a different area okay. um, and they often do come here for specialist uh, surgical treatment. In that instance generally they would have been seen by their local team pre-opted by them and been cited by them. Um, however, when they come here to have their surgery, we will care for them whilst they are here. Mm -hmm. We will um, teach them how to manage their stomas. Um, and then on discharge, we hand them back to their local team. So we call them, we call the local team directly and communicate the information that needs to be handed over okay. uh, with regards to products and how well they're getting on and, and you know, what sort of follow-ups they need. And is there any sort of follow-up by their local surgery or local practice nurses? Uh, Have they got any not function? necessarily, no. Their first point of call would generally be your stoma, your stoma nurse mm -hmm. um, or your surgical team, um, unless um, it's been advised that you need to go and see your practice nurse or um, GP for other issues. It could be wound management or anything like that. So now we're going to hear from some of the patients. Um, so, Barry, did you feel that the stoma team gave you the, the support that you needed? Certainly when I was in hospital, um, I, th I left with, to the local hospital with the stents still in place, but everything was, was checked out on a daily basis that I was in hospital for the five days. Okay. And have, um, have you found it easy to organise and obtain your medical supplies? Personally, uh, yeah, to organise, because I'm an organised person really. You've got to get into your mindset, make a plan, you know what you're going to be doing during the day, you know your problems. I change my bag once a day. Just plan. And what about your sort of um, daily routine then in terms of managing your stoma? Have you got your own routine? Of and well, that kind of changes over time, I think, as you become more confident with um, dealing with the stoma. Um, uh, I actually, I, I tend to, uh, I, I choose to shower without a bag on, which I never thought I would do in the early days, but that's actually my, my preference to not have the bag on for a short time. Um, so then I always make sure that before reattaching the, the bag afterwards, I tend to use a, a hair dryer on my skin to make sure that it's nice and dry. 
um, bef before reattaching a, a new bag. Um, and yeah, I've, I've been quite lucky. I haven't had really any sort of skin problems. I rarely use uh, one of the um, uh, wipes that you're given for, for the skin. I haven't needed those. Um, but, but I do use like a, an adhesive remover spray um, to help sort of get, get the bag off more easily. But um, I think it, it just takes time to become confident with what you're doing and then identify what works best for you as an individual, really. And then how does it change it? Because I understand that night time is different. So how, does, like, how do you manage night time? Connect to a night bag. Two litre night bag, stand alongside the bed mm -hmm. and just sleep. Yeah. Is that the same for the, the It bedroom? is. Um, in a nutshell. In a nutshell. I've, I've found difficulty with uh, night bag holders. It's down to our bed, we believe, so that's got changed this week. Um, so it's, it, it's in a receptacle on the floor. The only thing I have to remember is, if I go away, um, take an extension tube, because the bed may be three or four foot off the floor depending on what hotel you're in. So it's no good getting to a hotel with no side bag holder and it's too off the floor. Mm -hmm. So every time I go away, I always pack an extension tube or two. Okay, that's a good tip. Is that going on holiday? Does that cause any... Are there any extra things that you need to think about? Other than my only experience is, if you're going away as a couple, like with my wife, split the supplies, particularly if you're flying. Mm -hmm. Don't put all your supplies in one suitcase. Split the supplies. Even I have a small holder with a carry-on. So there's two or three, a couple of days worth of supply in that. Mm -hmm. But the whole, if I'm going away for a fortnight, all the stocks I'm going to use is in over two suitcases. Because mm -hmm. we know, we've heard, no, airlines, it's never happened to me, but airlines are notorious in misplacing a bag for a couple of days. Mm -hmm. So you, you don't get caught out by that. So are there, are there any limitations at all about what you can take on the plane? Do you need, or anything like that? The, the, the sprays that Janet mentioned are undersized for sprays taken on the, on the plane. Mm -hmm. The only thing I believe you shouldn't take on the plane is the scissors to cut the stoma. Mm -hmm. So all my supplies are pre-cut if I go away on holiday because the stone is not going to change drastically in that amount of time because it's, it's been used for, for a good amount of time. So it's just preparation for eventuality that might not happen, but it'll be, it'll be a bit inconvenient if it did. What about just in daily life? Is there any other sort of tips? Um, Plan. <laughs> mm. um, well, certainly it, as a female, I would, I would recommend uh, support knickers for other females that completely cover the bag. Okay. Um, that helps support some of the weight of the bag and, and it also it, it makes the bag more invisible so you can't be seen under your sort of clothing um, or whatever you wear. So that's definitely one of my recommendations to any um, to the, uh, female patients. My other tip, um, I always, you carry supplies anyway, but one of my other things that, that I always do carry um, it's actually, it's a, a gel bag, so in case you ever need, it's just like a portable toilet basically for us. If there's ever any emergency where you need to empty the bag, um, it can be emptied into here, this gel will solidify the urine and then you can dispose of it. Um, it's not something that's available on prescription or anything like that, but something that I found going about daily life is just one of those things that just fits in your handbag and gives you confidence about getting on with, with life again. Because there is an element of uh, being organised and plan, think about whatever it is you, you're doing in your daily life. Yeah. So thank you for being our guest today um, and hopefully I think the sort of future patients will have a greater understanding of sort of the problems and the choices and some of the you know, impact of their lifestyle that will have. Uh, so in video five, we're going to be investigating living beyond uh, bladder cancer and also some of the use of support groups.